Now I'm sure uh, we didn't have things like this 35 years ago. So this is, I think, a beautiful kit. Uh, Mini Art uh, 36026 Russian Street Diorama Series. Um, that's where the action will be taking place. With the base, so that's got the tram tracks running through the middle, got the cobblestone roadway, some pavement, got some uh, open ground there, a bit of a laneway through there, and of course the building will go in here, and just some debris. So that's a really nice crisp base. So I've trimmed off the edges already, and I did that specifically um, because I wanted to fit it in a base. Um, so I wanted to make sure the, the base was the right size and um, I'll, I'll show that in a, in a little while. So then we've got the vacuum formed um, wall sections which um, again are incredibly detailed, they look, look really really good, the brick works lovely, battle damage. Um, I just, I just think this is a really fabulous kit, so they'll all need to be cut out. And then of course the more traditional sprues with the building uh, accessories, uh, window frames and some wrought iron, which looks really nice. Um, the, the um, I guess telegraph poles uh, that carry the, the, the wires that, uh, that run the trams. Not sure if I'll have those in or not because uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe knocked over. I don't think they'll be functioning. Um, so again, really good detail and uh, lots of those. And then of course the instructions themselves, um, which it looks like a reasonably simple simple kit to put together. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting into it. I think it'll look fantastic. So for this diorama, I wanted a, um, a very specific size for the base because it, it needs to fit into a, a glass display cabinet, which is very um, a delicate structure. So it's just glass and, um, and wire frame. So I didn't want a lot of weight in it. So I just used uh, some molding, so stuff that you might use for skirting boards or architraves or things like that, um, to make a very simple frame, like a picture, like a picture frame. and. Um, just put some very thin MDF, the 3mm uh, MDF on the bottom of that uh, and then filled the cavity with this styrene so it's, it's really really light, um, it won't have a lot of weight at all, uh, just stained the, it's Tasmanian oak which I think has got a nice grain in it, just used some walnut stone and some matte varnish and then just put some felt on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the glass and it sits, doesn't move around uh, while it's on there. So that was um, very specifically made so that the base of the diorama, the mini art plastic base, uh, can fit inside there and it uh, hopefully it looks nice and it uh, keeps the edges sort of clean and tidy uh, and it all fits in uh, where it's supposed to fit in. So uh, the only thing that I've noticed is that this, because this is hollow uh, it, it's a bit bouncy and I don't really like that because when I put the figures on uh, in particular, I like to um, drill a hole in the base and, and have a little stem. So I have the figures, I have the figures on a stick for painting. Um, but when I want to mount them on the actual diorama, I, I'll leave some of that, cut it off, uh, drill a hole in there, and then that goes in. So glue, and, it, and for me that makes it really strong. It's not going to move. It's not, they're not going to fall. Or time won't uh, weaken the weaken the joint. Um, but that's not going to work very well because that's quite bouncy so what I'll do is to um, when I before I finish this off 
I'll, um, I'll actually just, because it's quite hollow, it's got a, a lip, so I'll um, use liquid resin and fill it with liquid resin, which won't add a, a lot to the weight, but it'll give it a lot of stability, it'll make it quite solid, and you'll also be able to drill into that. Um, so then when it's in here, it'll be nice and firm, be able to drill into it, mount the figures, and, and hopefully nothing moves. That's the plan. So what I've learnt from watching other people do this is um, you got to take your time because nothing good comes of rushing and it's all part of the process. So I think part of the... So I don't see any aspect of doing this, of, of building model kits and I find it all incredibly relaxing and enjoyable. Um, but you just got to take your time, and, and I think pace pace yourself. I think um, if it starts to be a chore, then there's no fun or pleasure in it. Um, why would you be doing it? So having scored those. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Let's see. You just have to be gentle. And if it doesn't immediately come, don't force it. And immediately, my mind thinks there's a really good piece of plastic that I can use for something somewhere else. So getting a nice little collection of um, vacuum formed plastic squares. So that's the first, first piece cut out. Uh, I know I'm not following the, the sequence of the instructions, but I really just kept, couldn't wait to, um, to see what these look like. So um, it, not all that hard. Probably only took uh, maybe under 10 minutes for sure. Uh, being really careful because it was the first time I've ever done it. And now I'm just going to give it a, where the score marks are, just give it a uh, right end. Because I've been careful, there's, there's not a lot of fuss. There's a, that's probably the worst part just there, that, that bit there. So I'm, I'm not unhappy about that. You can always just go back, I guess, and take off the worst of it. Like that. And then literally just uh, a very... I'm trying really hard just to focus on the edges. I don't want to, I don't want to scar there. Uh, just one. So I've, uh, I've cut out two parts now, so I've cut out the front part, um, which I showed before, which has come out alright, and the, the back half of that, so the, in, the inside walls, so the plasterboard there. And, um, so that, that, was, um, that was pretty easy, I didn't think it was too bad. You, you might have noticed in the speeded up version um, of the earlier footage I was, I started using this, the back of the cutting knife, and then I swapped to this, which is a um, pointy needle um, tipped. Uh, I actually got this for sculpting but um, it worked really really well so I stuck with that um, for the rest of it and uh, it really came out well. So so the next stage is uh, just, just
just checking the fit and the fit's not perfect and I didn't expect it would be because I've seen this made before um, on YouTube by somebody else and other mini art kits and I've had that sort of heard that feedback that um, the fit's not perfect. It's not terrible, but it's but it's not perfect. It's a, the back seems to be to be about half a millimeter shorter than the front, which is which is bizarre. Um, but it's a, it's not a disaster. I'm more focused on trying to make sure that the windows and the doors are, are really clearly aligned. The rest I, I know I can use um, filler to, to, to make that all right. Um, but the, the, I'm really focused on the windows and the doors. So again, what I, none of this is uh, me being uh, very clever. It's only what I've seen other people do is um, to put some extra um, sections of plastic on the inside here so there's a little bit more surface area for the two halves to come together so I'm going to I'm going to give that a go now and uh, and see if that helps um, which I hope it will do this doesn't, obviously doesn't have to be uh, meticulously perfect um, just want enough of it coming on both sides to give that extra extra space, the extra surface area, um, for it to uh, have a better bond, better ad adhesion. So anyway, I'll just do that. So I've just glued around the inside now of, of all those extra pieces that I put on and I've dry fitted it before I did that so I know it fits. Um, it's a little bit tricky but what I found was if I just focused on getting these three parts lined up and clipped on then the rest of it was pretty much right and and that will just need a little bit of uh, a little bit of filling um, to, to tidy it up so it looks a bit tricky. I'll try and, I'll try and do it. But if it's starting to take too long, then we might come back when it's finished. So it's a little bit tricky. It says that you get one bit on and the other bit wants to come off. But once you've got a couple of bits on, it starts to cooperate. And that was actually easier than the, that was easier than the dry fit. So that's right, and it just gives it a little bit of extra stability, which is good. So now I just glue around the edges, and uh, that bit's done. <laughs> 